Sorry, sorry guys, my laptop is stopped again. Uncover more information later today. Karen told the domestic violence advocate that she has suffered injuries and had video of the incident. On the night of October 2nd, Karen called police again when she believed an intruder was in her home. When police arrived and did not find anyone, she showed law enforcement a video showing a more severe instance of domestic violence than what was originally reported to an officer on September 28th. She met with detectives the next day to discuss new evidence, and detectives decided to upgrade the initial uh, this one is 16 Mr. minutes. <laughs> detectives reached Benefield, who turned himself in Tuesday, October 4th. When Benefield was released after the arraignment, the domestic violence advocate worked with Kiara to find safe housing, at which time she decided to stay at her mother's home. Kiara did everything she could to protect herself from her husband, but nothing seemed as if it were enough. She expressed her frustration with police in a Facebook post stating, I swear the cops aren't worth anything. This is crazy. They need a dead body before they help. I'm calling and begging them to help me. They are useless. The homicide occurred the very next day. Detectives stated that Benefield did not pull over for Buffalo police after the incident, maneuvering through a congested area and entering the Kensington Expressway headed in the wrong direction. Police later found his vehicle and gathered evidence. It's just been trying to get help. I've been with her going to police stations. She's been texting me, sending me videos, giving me her phone password just in case. Montasia Jeter says her sister, Kiara Hudson, was in an abusive relationship, even posting a disturbing video on social media that shows her getting beaten shot up. Three times. Jeter says her sister was staying with her mother because she feared for her life. She's been staying at my mom's house for the last two days. And that she was going to go to court today because he was trying to get custody. In. But she never made it to court or work. Family members telling me Kara strapped on a bulletproof vest before leaving the house Wednesday morning, got in her SUV with her three kids, and was on her way to drop them off at school when she was shot and killed. He must have been stalking her. My mom asked her, why are you putting that vest on? She said, because, Mom, he's going to kill me. You don't understand. And as soon as she went around the corner, he killed her. He smashed into the front of her car in front of a school bus and got out the car with a shotgun and shot her and called off. Her ex-boyfriend and father of one of the kids in the SUV tells me this should have never happened. I know he was arrested a couple days ago for domestic violence. Your daughter was in that car? Yes, she was. She saw what happened? Yes, she did. And there was two other kids in the car. Where's your daughter now? In the house. She okay? Yes, ma'am. She would call every once in a while and ask questions and say, what should I do? And... The video was posted on Facebook. Everybody seen it. Everybody was trying to help her, and this is what happens. The video you sent me was posted on Facebook. Yes, it was. She yeah. said if anything ever happens to her, she will not rest in peace. This man was a criminal. She should have never been a Hudson's family believes bail reform is to blame. I spoke with New York State Assembly Majority Leader Crystal People Stokes, who is a strong supporter of bail reform. At the end of the day. Bail reform is about not incarcerating people prior to a trial. And there's a lot of things they could have done with that gentleman besides let him go. But the clerk for the chief to judge stupid. that Why did you let him go Why? tells our IT. I won't understand of the police. Why you had to let the criminal go? They, they did something bad. Williams family says they won't stop until justice is served. They say there were numerous warning signs, including a video posted on social media appearing to show Kira being physically abused. She just bought a full of vest two days ago, posted it on Facebook. And she took a picture in it last night and said, if this isn't a cry for help, I don't know what is. Buffalo Police Department. Nobody did anything. Nobody has been doing anything. And now she mentioned the police. Now the captain of the Chief Tawaka Police Department speaking moments ago saying his officers did all they could legally. He says a domestic violence advocate was working with Hudson. He also said it is, quote, frustrating when you try, you have so many steps in place and you know somebody is in danger. You know there's a clear and present danger, yet the court has no option but to let this person back out into our community, end quote. Chief Gold of the Chief Dewaga Police Department just told us about how this issue within Chief Dewaga started. It started back on September 28th when police were called to the family's home for a complaint that Adam had punched um, Kira in the, in the face. And police were called to deal with that situation. When they got there, Benefield was locked in the bathroom 
when she came out of the bathroom, she was brought to UCMC for a medical and a psycho psychological evaluation. During that time, they issued a warrant for his arrest. And on Thursday, a domestic violence advocate made contact with Kira. She, and she showed her a video of the injuries and the actual assault that took place. The domestic violence advocate told her to send that video to police. Friday by Friday, they still had not had the video and arranged for a meeting with the victim on Monday. By Tuesday, the suspect turned himself in and he was arraigned and released um, because the charges that were put against him did not qualify for bail. Police say that is frustrating. <laughs> New York State is the last state that doesn't take into account. Is this the how New York is? To the community when considering bail. That is something that is we've he asked for. Now in Pennsylvania, what I found with some criminal, there's there something wrong. They'll, they will stay in the prison the rest of their life. From about 2000 to 2015, for the attempted kidnapping of two women, and then an escape from the Erie County Correctional Facility in Alden, New York, 2000. Benefield, described as mentally troubled at the time of his 2000 arrest, drove a stolen car to cut off the vehicle for a lady's trench to grow up. He then forced the girlfriend at gunpoint to drive to Grand Island with police chasing them. Benefield, who was 22 at the time, then escaped the correctional facility by climbing over a 15-foot fence in a roll of razor wire at the top and was at large for 19 hours. When police traced the manhunt to a friend's home, Benefield locked himself inside the home, cut his wrist with a kitchen knife, and threatened to blow up the building with fumes from a gas stove. His trial was delayed due to a psychiatric evaluation. During a news conference on Thursday, Buffalo police urged anyone who encountered him to call 911, but not to interact with him if he is considered armed and dangerous. Crime Stoppers Buffalo offered a $7,500 reward for information leading to his whereabouts. A GoFundMe was created by Kiara's family to cover child care expenses for all three of Kiara's children. Discussing the death and the impacts of the worst law in the history of New York State. Three children woke up Repair their right reform. That is, if they even were able to flee, or were able to wait to flee after being inches from her when she was executed in cold blood by a man who had no business being free. Kara Hudson knew exactly what would happen. She was begging and pleading for anyone to listen. Yeah, what? Why you don't help her? To the point that she wore a bulletproof vest, driving her children to school. Is a thought like that entered anyone in this room's mind? And if that's not the biggest indictment on how our system is failing people when they feel that they need to strap on a bulletproof vest to transport their children to school, then I don't know what is. Now, sadly, that bulletproof vest couldn't stop Adam in the field. The only thing that could have stopped him is if he was behind bars in a jail cell. And the only thing that could have stopped him was a judge with the power to use his discretion and say, you are too dangerous to roll my fist. fail in the dismantling of our criminal justice in the state of New York, Adam Benefield was arrested on a slew of domestic violence charges. And he walked out the door a free man on his own recognizance. Why? Where he was 24 hours later, he stalked and murdered his wife and her children in the back seat. Now, this is an RBQ. If this doesn't, I don't know what kind of society, society we're living in.
Okay, guys, I will see you in my last video, so I'll see you then.